Derek, firstly, let's talk about the last couple of weeks and perhaps you can give me an insight into your training regime and how you've prepared for the Standard Chartered Dubai Marathon. The, the last four weeks I've, I've been in Kenya, so I've trained in, in a 10, which is uh, an altitude training camp. I've been there every year for the last four years. Um, I go for the month of January. Um, I tend to follow a strenuous programme and it's similar to what I do back home. So it's something I'm used to doing, it's a programme I'm used to following. And yeah, training seems, seems to be going better every year when I get there, so hopefully it all pays off tomorrow. Well, Kenya has a rich heritage of long distance running. I mean, what do you think it brings to you and indeed as you progress in your career? Because you've achieved so much already. I think the biggest positive thought about Kenya is the, the positive vibes that you get from certainly of the, the members of the public. You don't run past many people and they, and they tend to all acknowledge you. And it just feels it's a special place to be. The, the runs are amazing, the scenery is fantastic and uh, the locals and the young kids, it really inspires you and spurs you on when you're, certainly when you're getting towards the latter stage of a longer run when you're feeling tired, um, yeah they help you massively. 2020 is a hugely significant year, it's Paralympics year, but what was the thought process behind competing here in Dubai? Um, the, the biggest thought process certainly was to get a good warm weather marathon behind me and also gives me, it gave me a, a, a marathon to train for and focus for over the winter. This is the first year I'm going to miss London since 2014. So it's, it's kept me focused over the winter, which has been really good. And yeah, it's vital prep going into the next few months, which are going to be massively important. So yeah, this race will come in really handy for that. Um, any thoughts on the course? Has anyone given you an insight into what it's like? Um, I spoke to one of my para athlete mates, um, Rob Smith, he said it's flat and fast and there's not many turns, so I'm expecting hopefully a good race tomorrow and I'm hoping that also the conditions are quite favourable as well. Yeah. Because there's so much to think about. Obviously it's a flat course, but of course you start so early in the morning. There's loads of different elements to this as an event. Yes, a 6am a 6 start is um, earlier than I usually run, um, so I'm up at 3 for breakfast, but it's just as it is what it is. It's, it's a part of the process, I suppose. Um, so yeah, I'm I'm looking forward to getting the shoes laced up tomorrow and, and getting getting going. Mm -hmm. As I said, it's a hugely significant year. How fired up are you with that thought in the back of your mind about Tokyo and obviously representing GB? There's nothing like it. There's nothing like pulling on the the nation vest, the the colours of Great Britain. It's a huge honour. And yeah, when I went to Rio in 2016, to become a Paralympian was pretty special. But I've never been this motivated to succeed and be the best I can be. And that, that's the motivation and the drive behind everything I do, the, the work I do every day, the miles I do every week. Um, it's all, f all for the bigger picture and that, and that this year is Tokyo. Yeah. And I know you're an incredibly proud Scotsman as well. That element representing your country, I mean, there's nothing quite like it, having those colours. Yes, um, I've always done it in phases. So to represent your county is an honour. Then you get a step up to your country and then to represent your nation. So I, I luckily I've had them all. But yeah, I'm, I'm proud of where I come from in Scotland. I'm from the East Coast and I'm proud of my country. So yeah, I always wear the colours with pride, certainly.